Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to present uh, the results of a research that we have conducted between 2020 and 22 at the University of Trento. The aim of our study was to explore a multi-objective assessment method for the identification of most suitable areas for agricultural purposes between host surfaces that have been invaded by forests. In the end, the method proved to be used to add in other environmental assessment for territorial planning purposes. The context in which we are moving is uh, the European mountainous regions that are invading by forests in the uh, last decades. These uh, uh, areas, these OX open areas, are very important and play a key ecological role for biodiversity conservations. This phenomenon is particularly evident in the Trentino region in Italy, where an important land use change is happening, reducing those open areas that are fundamental for ecological purposes. To preserve these open areas is increasingly important to include policies for their protection in the regional planning and above all recognize their importance for the natural environment. It is also very important to quantify the phenomenon and classify those areas according to their ecological vocation. Forest planning and land management are key elements in preserving these areas and ensuring their maintenance and the integrity of ecosystems. The literature identifies multi-criteria and multi-objective methods for environmental assessment, since, since they can examine multiple competing land use. Through these approaches, different criteria and analysis can be compared both contemporarily and separately, and this methodological process provides a more precise and clear classification output than classical multi-criteria analysis. Our research focused on, uh, uh, it, it was conducted during a Saturn project, which was an EIT climate kick project that uh, had started in 2019 and ended in uh, 2021. In the Saturn project, where three areas were part of the Saturn project, the city of Gothenburg in Sweden, the city of Birmingham in the UK and the Trentino region in Italy. In the Trentino region, we have two main, three main areas, which are the municipality of Trento, the municipality of Pergine, and the Piana Rotaliana Valley. The objective of our research was to play a multi-criterial analysis to apply that to identify the former open areas recognized by forests that are most promising from an agricultural and ecological recovery perspective. The aim was to identify a method to run a multi-objective analysis that uh, provides a simultaneous comparison of multi-criteria analysis using geoinformatic, sorry, geographic information system. The method was made up of four main stages, criteria definition in first, uh, in first stage, then a criteria weight, and then the comparison between multi-criteria analysis and multi-objective analysis. The tools we used was a QGIS 3.16, and uh, we used also questionnaires and surveys to uh, better define the weight of the parameters that we choose. As mentioned before, the research has been conducted during the Saturn project in the autonomous province of Trento between 20 and 21. The autonomous province of Trento is an Italian alpine region in northwest Italy, encompassing about 60,100 hectares with a population of roughly half and a million people. The geography of the, provi of, provi of the province, which is made up of valleys and high mountains with la la large percentages of steep slopes, is, re is reflected in, in the fact that 88% of the municipalities are located at a height of more than 1600 meters above sea level. Because of these geographical features, farming has always been challenging and terraces were built to solve the problem. Nowadays, agricultural machinery is frequently unsuitable for usage in such location, and therefore most of the farming part of the farmer areas are moved in the valley floor, where it is easier to use the machinery. As I said before, we have uh, three main areas in uh, our case studies, which is made up of uh, more uh, of uh, nine uh, uh, municipalities. 
Seven municipalities are part of the Rotaliana Valley. One municipality is the Trento City and the, the other uh, and the last uh, municipality is Pergine Valsugana. The city of Trento, which is also the capital of the region, is located along the valley, Al Adige Valley. The major water courses that flow through the city of Trento are the Adige River, which runs through it from north and south, and the Fersina Stream, which runs through it from east and to southwest. In recent decades, the city has undergone a strong urban expansion toward the hillside, and Trento is now a very important tertiary center, with a high level of industries, activities in peripheral areas, but also the agricultural part is important because uh, all, uh, about one third of uh, the areas is covered by agricultural uh, fields. And also we have a very expanded uh, forest. The second case study is represented by uh, Pergine Valsugana, that is the second, uh, sorry, the third largest municipality in Trentino. The town is located in the middle of Trentino, near close to, to Trento, and Pergine Valsugana includes uh, several hamlets. In Pergine Valsugana, the agricultural sector is very, very important. And also here we have a very uh, high percentage of the surface of a municipality that is covered by forest. The first, the third case study is represented by the Piana Rotaliana Valley, which is a very large uh, plan in, uh, for the Trentino region, in which the agricultural sector is the main uh, say economic sector. In fact, we have a very high percentage of fields that are covered by vineyards. The data collection of our work started from an automatic land use classification maps obtained from the orthophotos of 1954 and, and 2015, highlighting the areas of forest expansion thanks to a previous research. The estimated surface involved in this transformation is approximately of 3,000 hectares, corresponding to 11% of the total surface of the Trentino. UGIS uh, uh, 84 is the reference ellipsoid used for the map processing and the projection used is UTM. The municipalities of interest for the project are located in zone 32. The first step was the definition of a criteria that can be used for scoring the classification of the goodness or suitability of the area studies. The criteria has been divided into three categories. The first category represents the criteria suitable for the evaluation of areas for agricultural restoration. Then we have criteria, criteria for ecological evaluation. And at the end, we have uh, created a third category that collect criteria used for both ecological assessment and agricultural potential. We have also defined constraints because uh, in particular regarding the criteria used for the uh, agricultural assessment, we have uh, many uh, physical and political limits. Instead, the category, B, the category regarding the ecological assessment have no sub are no subject to limitations. Firstly, all criteria were analyzed separately to understand all the particularity of the case, and then they have uh, con uh, analyzed the uh, contemporaries. After the definition of the criteria and the constraints, we have uh, weighted the parameters that could be affected by the subjectivity uh, of a researcher, be because we don't have uh, physical or normative leave limits to assign the weights. So to reduce the incidence of this error factor, questionnaires and surveys have been administered to specific samples of experts and technicians. Specifically, we had two groups. The first group made up of five uh, experts, and the second group was made up of more than 100 uh, people that uh, respond to these questionnaires and surveys. After uh, uh, weighting the parameters, we developed uh, two equations to calculate the agricultural importance of the areas analyzed and also to uh, quantify and assess the ecological uh, um, aspects of the, the, of the areas. We run three different methods to test uh, and uh, assess uh, these areas. And uh, then, uh, at the end, uh, the, the methods have been compared and discussed. 
The first two methods uh, have been run through a QGIS raster calculator, and the third it has been operated with a script. The first two have been compared before separately and then simultaneously. The first method consists in uh, the subtraction between the ecological and agricultural ana uh, criteria analysis, previously normalized and multiplied. From this first analysis, it has been possible to determine which the two parameters, ecological or agricultural, prevails, and uh, more specifically, uh, the more positive the value, the more the agricultural aspects prevails, whereas uh, the most, more the value is negative, on the contrary, the more of the ecological aspect prevails over, over the agricultural one. The second method is similar to the first, but uh, uh, instead of subtracting the values, we multiplied the agricultural uh, criteria to the ecological criteria. The result represents the importance of the area under the two combined aspects. From this second analysis, it has been possible to determine, to determine how the two aspects interact with each other. The third method, which is the most the more uh, innovative, uh, compares the two multi-criteria analyses performed with raster data in GRASS through a specifically developed tools script. The script's input uh, are the individual multi-criteria analyses, and in this, in this uh, specific case of our research, the input was the multi-criteria anal analysis of the agricultural and ecological values previously performed. The script uh, differs from the simple multiplication between the two rasters, so from uh, this um, second method, because it is possible to know which value predominates over the other, because here in the matrix, as you can see, we can uh, see uh, contemporarily the ecological value of and the agricultural value of each cell. So different information and colors graduation are associated with each cell, which correspond to the map uh, we developed. To, to verify the results, uh, we did uh, nine field visits and uh, through them we validate the model. So we, uh, go, we went to in, the, in these areas and verified the information we, we developed through the, the previous analysis. So the results. Uh, the first method, which is the agricultural minus the ecological uh, uh, criteria value, um, represent, uh, so, uh, uh, give us the possibility to determine which, which of the two parameters, ecolo ecological or agricultural, prevailed over in the former open uh, areas considered. And as I said before, in this method, it is not uh, possible to, uh, to analyze the contemporary the two aspects. So we can only say that if uh, the ecological value is more than uh, the agricultural aspects or the contrary. The second method determines, on the contrary, how the two aspects interact, interact with, with each other. But through this method, it's not possible to discriminate which of the two parameters prevails uh, over the other. So, furthermore, the map can be used to identify areas suitable for both agricultural restoration, but not, we cannot uh, say which is uh, an area that is, for example, uh, uh, higher with, from an ecological point of view or agricultural point of view. The third, me the third method, instead, has been developed to obtain a mul two multi-criterial analysis. So, through this method, we can uh, we can know if the, which value prevails and also how the two value interacts uh, interact between each other. The, uh, the limits of our method are mainly three. The first is a limitation that is related to the dating of the maps. In fact, the temporal evaluation is a crucial element in this map analysis. So if a map turns out to be too dated, the model may suffer and become less accurate. The, assign the second limit is the assignment of weights, that is another important element to be considered. In fact, it is the mo element most affected by the subjectivity of the operator. And finally, we have a third limitation that could be considered as the last, uh, that uh, the uh, method can be related to the choice of criteria. The type of analysis and variables involved in the multi-criterial evaluation has been chosen according to the quantity and quality of data available. 
final consideration regards that the obtained results showed how the multi-objective approach differs from the classical approach based on single criterion analysis for its potential to produce a more precise and clearer classification output of a considered aspect, showing that the multi-criterial analysis and their dependence on a single final map. And finally, the multi-criteria approach, which initially provides for a separate analysis of the research layers, and then integrates them into a single final output may represent a starting point for the ecosystem valuation. So uh, connected to this last point, we have uh, um, uh, future developments that can be improved. That is uh, a replication of this model in other contexts, which can be, for example, a, met a methodology for a risk assessment in which we can, for example, assess three different aspects, hazard, vulnerability, and asset value in a given areas. In, uh, moreover, a, fine, a future development could be the uh, transformation of a script into a plugin for the QGIS, guaranteeing greater functionality for those who wish to use it, for example, public administration in their planning purposes. Thank you for your attention.